Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be telling you guys I'm talking about the Venom 3 plot synapses. I'll be telling you guys some good details and my thoughts on this plot. And if I think it will do any good with the fans or in the box office. But before we get into this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and turn on those post notifications so now you can find my post new video. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So yeah, ever since Venom 3 has been announced to be in the works and in the making, we've been getting leaks after leaks. And now we have the plot synopsis of what's going to happen in this movie and what it's going to be about. And I'm going to read you guys the details of this plot. Okay, so according to this plot, the third installment of the Venom franchise from Sony's Spider-Verse centering on the popular anti-hero. In this upcoming action film, the alien symbiote Venom learns through his multiversal hive mind that Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, is destined to kill him and his human host, the journalist Eddie Brock. So Venom pursues Eddie to hunt down Peter in his own universe to change the future, a task which is complicated by the fact that at this point, Peter is just a 10-year-old boy. But after locating the child and kidnapping him before ultimately killing him, Eddie begins to have second thoughts, especially after Venom exposes the young Peter to normal spiders after a severe allergic reaction. Eddie needs to take Peter to the hospital, pretending to be his father. Now that section of the plot tells us about Peter in this universe, now this next section will tell us about the villain of the film. And it continues by saying, but with the symbiote increasingly unhappy with Eddie's place as his host body, Eddie soon realizes that he has more to worry about with the appearance of a powerful new symbiote known as Toxin, an offspring of the murderous Carnage, who has merged with Detective Patrick Mulligan, before vowing to destroy all monsters, including Venom and the young Peter Parker. And when he spawns a new group of symbiotes, including one that merges with Lieutenant Patricia Robertson, who begins a new relationship with Eddie, this new deadly alien group threatens to unleash destruction on the entire city of San Francisco. But a new heavily armed group, known simply as the Jury, appears intent on killing all symbiotes in existence, led by Oral Taylor, whose oldest son was killed previously by Carnage in an attempt to escape prison. And now, threatened on all fronts, Eddie must keep the young Spider-Man alive as he faces against both a deadly new group of spawned aliens and a vigilante group that wants to eradicate him as he attempts to keep his own life from falling apart and prevent ultimate carnage from befalling on the people of San Francisco. So if, if you guys didn't understand that plot synopsis, basically all it's talking about is Eddie Brock, aka Venom, finding out that Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, will kill them in the future. So they try to kill him, but then they find out that Peter Parker is only a 10-year-old boy. So instead of trying to kill Peter, they try to protect him from a murderous group of symbiotes that have assembled by a symbiote who was the offspring of Carnage, whose name is Toxin. But this group of symbiote are also being hunted down by a sort of military group called the Jury. Now, if you guys don't know who the Jury are, they are basically a group from the comics who have the same motive and origin that they are going to have in this movie. The only difference is that instead of Carnage killing the leader of the Jury's son, it was Venom who did it in the comics. But other than that, they're basically the same group, but they are also in the comics. They partnered up with a team called the foundation to help them achieve their anti-symbiote movement and trying to kill everything and i don't know if that's what they're going to do in this movie but we'll have to watch and find out now according to that plot of nasa's i feel like what they're describing is the symbiote invasion which is something that happened in the comics in the comics the story follows carnage trying and successfully killing the president then the symbiotes wreak havoc on the whole town until they are shortly stopped by a group of good symbiotes that's just a little like small and short summary of basically what that symbiote invasion is about but yeah it seems like that's what they're going to adapt in this venom 3 movie and we're going to be introduced to multiple new symbiotes one very famous symbiote called scream who will be played by juno temple who will also be eddie brock's new love interest and the guy who's going to play oral taylor aka the leader of the jury is going to be that one guy from the doctor strange movies the reason why I'm not saying his name because it's very hard to pronounce both his first and last name. So it's just this guy. He's going to be playing Oral Taylor, leader of the jury in this movie. Now for my thoughts on how good the movie's going to do and if it's just going to be anything special at all. If you ask me what I think about this plot synopsis is it sounds a lot like Madam Web. 
in that movie, there's this villain who figured out that these three girls are going to inevitably kill him. So he just hunts them down until he tries to kill them, but then he fails. Now, if this movie is going to be anything like that, I really hope that they, that they like do it right. Or else it's going to end up exactly like how Madam Web ended up. A terrible movie. And it's been voted one of the worst movies in comic book history to ever be invented. Which is a crazy title. But other than that, I feel like this story definitely has some potential. Especially with the symbiote invasion. That is a great story to adapt in live action. But my only other flaw in this is that they're making Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, a 10-year-old kid. That is one of the most biggest mistakes that Sony could ever do. This Venom 3 movie has so much potential, and Sony is just, just doesn't want to use it for some odd reason. Sony could have a great movie in their hands if only they listen to the fans. The fans know what they want. They want to see Venom fight Spider-Man in live action. And I know we've already gotten that in Spider-Man 3, but fans did not like that, and they want a redemption arc for this battle. And Sony could give the fans that. But instead, they want to try to make, I guess, Madam Web 2 in a different storyline, though, and try to make it better, which I can promise most of you guys, this will not do well. It will not do well at all. Not with the fans and not in the box office. Like, making Peter Parker a 10-year-old boy is, like, one of the most biggest mistakes that Sony could ever do for this movie. Instead of just maybe getting Andrew Garfield back or some other random actor to play Spider-Man and having them face off. So, yeah, I don't think that this movie will do well. And it's kind of sad to say because I feel like this whole little franchise, like, came from, like, a good foundation with Venom 1. I actually like that movie a lot. And this and whole, like, trilogy has a lot of potential, but for some reason, Sony is just limiting themselves for no reason, and they're not gonna make a lot of money from this, and it's gonna do terrible, if you ask me, but hey, only time will tell, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys today, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and turn on those post notifications so that you can come up when I post a new video, now without further ado, I'll see you on my next one, peace!